evening and welcome to the BNZ University Challenge. Tonight, Canterbury and Waikato meet in the grand final. Asking the questions, Peter Sinclair. Thank you, good evening and welcome to Peter. It's nice to have your company. <coughs> well, it's been an exciting series so far. We've had uh, fast-moving, high-scoring matches. We've had some notable contestants. We've had Jim Bolger's son, relation of Jim McClay. Uh, we've had uh, Sir George Laking's grandson and the New Zealand chess champions. Of Haiti. All have been contestants on the show. We've also had a brand new team with us. I'm referring to the BNZ, to whom many thanks for excellent prizes like these. Here they are. Each member of the winning team will receive an Apple Macintosh computer system plus a BNZ Campus Pack account with a $500 credit balance. The runners-up each receive a Hewlett-Packard calculator plus a BNZ Campus Pack account with a $500 credit balance. The next highest scoring semi-finalists each receive a Hewlett-Packard calculator plus a BNZ Campus Pack account with a $250 credit balance. In addition, each contestant will receive a Campus Pack sports bag and a Campus Pack account with a $100 credit balance. And I'm sure the prospect of prizes like that will be a spur to the intelligence of both teams tonight. Let's meet them first. Here's Canterbury. Hi, I'm Mark doing mathematics. Good evening. I'm Alex Lushkin, interminably doing a BCom and a PhD in language. And their captain. Hi, I'm Jo Lisa doing Japanese and French. And this is our mascot, Sam, who we hope will save us from ignominious defeat. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony. I'm still doing philosophy and in reply to a few queries, yes, this is my only shirt. <laughs> And opposing them, Waikato. Hello, my name's Chris. I was going to do a very boring introduction. Hi, I'm John J. Starfighter, and he decided against it. And their captain. Kia ora, I'm Nicola Brown, and Baldrick and I are still searching for the perfect introduction. Hi, and I'm Tim Plant, and I think she's got it. <laughs> <laughs> and as well as all those fine prizes uh, you've seen, uh, the teams are also competing for the 1988 BNZ University Challenge trophy. Here it is. Weighs a ton. It must be gold or something. Very like it. That'd be nice to take back to the campus. And now let the match begin. The same rules as always. Two sorts of questions. Starter questions worth 10 points and bonus questions worth a total of 15. And here it is. The first question in the 1988 final for 10 points. What colour does an underwater organism usually adopt in order to be difficult to be seen at night? Any member either Spife, team? Waikato. Dark purple. That's not right, I'm afraid. Canterbury, can you take it? No conferring. This is a starter. Ten points. Any member of the Canterbury team? Smith, Canterbury. Yellow? No, not, I'm afraid. It is red. Let's try another one. Get the match underway. Of what battle did Byron write that the earth is covered thick with other clay, which her own clay shall cover, heaped and pent, rider and horse, friend, foe, in one red burial blent? It was the last action of the Napoleonic Wars. Any Plant, Waikato. Waterloo. Nice reaction, Mr. Plant. That's it. You're on your way. Ten points, Waikato. And here's your bonus. New Zealand's highest honour is the award, the Order of New Zealand. The award was instituted in February last year. And in August this year, the first ten recipients were invested. I'll give you five points for each two you can name. Okay. Up to a total of 15. Sonia okay, Sonia Davies, Te Aterangi Kahu. That's two, five points. Lady Blundell, Sir Edmund Hillary. That's another two, uh, another five points. Clarence, Clarence Beebe. Jim Knox. And uh, Jim Knox. Absolutely right. Clean sweep with the bonus. 15 points. You're on your way. 25. And Canterbury yet to score. And here's another starter. Who in Greek mythology fell in love with his, uh, with his own ivory statue? Smythe. Waikato. Oh, dear. Uh, no luck, Mr. Smythe. It wasn't Narcissus, was it? It wasn't. I'll have to throw it across to Canterbury and you lose five points. I'll continue for Canterbury. Of his own ideal woman, he was a sculptor and king of Cyprus. No conferring Canterbury, this is a start. Any idea? Any offer? Loshkin, Canterbury. Big million. That is correct, Mr. Loshkin. Well done. Ten points for Canterbury and you're on your way with a chance at a bonus. Bonus on politics this year. What political negotiations were carried out in April by martial arts expert and gendarme, Captain Philippe Legorgius? What? Um, did he go to New Caledonia? New Caledonia. Yeah, the, the, um... New Caledonia for the hostages. Uh, yes, the, host yeah. the hostage drama in New Caledonia. That's it. Negotiations for the release of the 23 hostages on Uvea. Well done. Five points. Secondly, history has been made today, said Mr. Schultz in April, after he had signed the United Nations mediated settlement between which three countries? Uh, um, United Nations mediated In settlement. April? In April. In the, is it the Middle East? Um, Central America? Don't want to hurry you about the Middle East. East. Middle East. Middle East. It's, it's Iran, Iraq, and. and and is that your answer? Iran, Iraq and... Sorry, Soviet Union, Afghanistan and Pakistan. So no points for that part of the bonus. But chance for a further five points here. Which former peacemaker of British politics resigned in June? 
Peacemaker. peacemaker. Which form of peacemaker? Uh, any idea at all? <laughs> <laughs> Member of the Conservative Party? Oh, um, Lord, um... It was... <laughs> it was... It was William Whitelaw. No points for that part of the bonus. Has another start of ten points. What substance is liquid at ordinary temperatures and has high melting and boiling points when compared with other compounds of similar molar mass, but as a solid, as a solid is less dense... Smith, Canterbury. Water. Nicely interrupted, Canterbury. That's what it was. And I had yards of clues to feed in there, but Mr. Smith short-circuited all that, so here's a chance at a further 15 on P's in astronomy, but not necessarily in the answer. What is the other name for the Big Dipper, which is made up of the seven bright stars in the constellation Major. Ursa Major? Yeah, Ursa Major. Mm? Oh, no, I'll just repeat beer. The other name for the Big Dipper, which is made up of the seven bright stars in the constellation. So the plough or the Great Beer? Oh, it's the plough. Plow. That's yeah. it, five points. Secondly, what star is nearest to the sun? Oh, Alpha Centauri. Pro no, Proximus Centauri. Proximus Centauri. Proximus Centauri. Proximus Centauri. Proximus Centauri. Just got it. That's it. Five <laughs> points. And thirdly, what causes a, a mock sun or perihelion, uh, an image of the sun which is more frequently seen in polar regions? What causes that? A perihelion. Refraction. Some form of refraction. False. Refraction. What sort of refraction? Atmospheric. Atmospheric refraction. Uh, in what respect atmospheric? <laughs> uh, this would go on for hours. Uh, through the polar, polar atmosphere. <laughs> yes. What's in the atmosphere? Yeah. Ice, ice it's crystals. A ice, ice crystals. crystals. I'll, I'll give you the point. You were right. It is diffraction, but I had to have a slightly more uh, detail than that, so you get the five points. And here's another start of ten. What 450-foot tower was built on an island off Alexandria? And Warner, Waikato. Fear House Lighthouse. That is it. Nicely interrupted, Waikato. Ten points, and here's your bonus. Which frog, often found in clumps of raupo bushes and flax, is named from the chirping noise made by the male? Just the common name, it's the something frog. Um, what? Bullfrog? It's the... Yeah. Any no. idea? Oh. Bullfrog? No, it's the whistling frog. Secondly, what introduced frog is coloured green and gold with a green stripe down the back? The frog has warty skin and copiously webbed feet. I don't know if you'd turn into a prince if you kissed him, but uh, what's his name anyway? Uh, a hotch or something? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Hotch-stitter's frog? No, it's a green tree frog and thirdly which continent is the native home of the tree shrew continent. south america or africa one of the two south america. Yeah. south america no southeast asia no points there let's have a music starter you're going to hear initially you're going to hear the sea and another a specific sea sound i want to know what specifically the sea sound is here it is <laughs> smythe waikato that's the sound of oars Rowing of oars. I'm sorry, that is not the sound of oars. Um, can I? Can you take it, Canterbury? Smith, Canterbury. Sounded very much like the creaking of timbers in rigging. Creaking mm. of timbers of a boat on the sea. Can you be a little more specific on that? <sighs> um, the creaking that the masts make in a high wind. How's that? No, I can't give it to you. That actually was the sound of the wash of a yacht. So I'll just uh, hang on to our sounds. We'll have them as our next bonus. And uh, uh, here's the starter for it. What change would occur in the appearance of the shell of a chicken egg laid on a hot day, given that hens can only perspire by panting through their mouths, and therefore the loss of carbon dioxide could only be made up at the cost of decreased formation of calcium carbonate needed to make the shells? What changes would occur in the appearance of the shell? Any offers? Any Wilson, budgeting? Canterbury. They look thinner. That's exactly it. They would be quite considerably thinner. Well done, Canterbury. Ten points. <laughs> and now we'll have those three sounds to identify. Absolutely no clues. Here's the first. It's either a pause or a fire. Yeah, fire. Fire. Yes. Fire. Easy one. It's a fire. Five points. How about this? Well, it's a sea mammal, a whale or a, or a dolphin. A dolphin. You've got to give me a humpback whale. Ah, humpback whale? Yes, a humpback whale. How did you know it was a humpback whale? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> whale would have been fine, yes, but it was a humpback you. whale. Five points. And thirdly, here it is. Tractor? Yes, it sounds pretty real. Um, oh, no, hang on a minute. It's no, a it's, it's a threshing machine. I think so, yeah, a threshing okay. machine. Sounds reefing, good. Combine uh, harvester reefing <laughs> sort of thingy. Should have stuck with the tractor, I'm afraid. It was quite similar to the tractor. No luck there. Here's another start of 10 points. What is the score? 60 30. Uh, what's the English name for the animal represented in the constellation of Fiocus? Wilson, Canterbury. Snake. Sudden death on that question. You're quite right. Well done, Mr. Wilson. Canterbury, another 10 points. And had all sorts of clues for that. Here's your bonus. Uh, on clowns. Three clowns from Shakespeare. In which play does each appear? 
Firstly, the clown who jokes bordily with Cassio and the musicians, which play? Cassio. Oh, it's Cassio. Is it you like it? Yeah, it sounds like As you it. like it. As you like it. No, Othello. Secondly, the clown who buries the remains of Antigonus. Antigonus? Whoa. Which play? Um, Julius Caesar. No, no. Julius Caesar. Any idea? Yeah, Julius Caesar. The Winter's Tale is correct. No points. And thirdly, the clown who brings his mistress a basket of figs. Uh, Thanks. Um, Surely. Is it Anthony and Cleopatra? Anthony and Cleopatra. Indeed it is. It had an asp inside it. Well done. Five points salvaged from that bonus. Less than three minutes to go until the halfway point. Another start of a ten. Which playwright created a character called Furpo, who is as thin as a spoon and the butt of Te Paranga Beach, for a solo performance which opens with the words, I invite you to join me in a voyage into the past, to that territory of the heart called childhood. The name of the play is The End of the Golden Weather. <laughs> Brown, Waikato. Bruce Mason. That's it. Thought you might get it with that last one. Ten points. And here's your bonus. Uh, what was the tribe of Chief Ohangihika? Uh, Ngapuhi. Is correct. Five points secondly. What name was given to the son of the chief of the Ngati Toa, Werewera, in honour of an edible plant which grew in profusion on the sand dunes at Kafia? What do they call him? Yeah. Um, is it potato? Yeah, that'll do. Potato? No, te raupraha was correct. No points for that. And thirdly, what was the highland home of the fierce Maori tribe who were known as the Ngapotiki or the Tuhoi? What was their Could highland be home? Uruweras. Uruweras yeah. um, is yeah. exactly yeah. right. Five points. And it's 75 to 50 still in favour of Canterbury, but a very tightly fought match so far. Another start of 10 points. Who became financial controller to Louis XIV and in his capacity of secretary... Loshkin, Canterbury. Fouquet. I'm sorry, lose five points, Mr. Loshkin, for Canterbury. I'll continue for uh, Waikato. Uh, secretary of State for Naval Affairs began the construction of a large French navy. He was succeeded by the Marquis de Louvois. His first names were Jean-Baptiste, who was, you know, conferring this as a starter. Any idea? Move it along. Warner, Waikato. Courbet. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Courbet. Close, I'm afraid, but not Close enough, it's Colbert, in fact, after whom Sol Colbert is named. One minute at half time, bad luck. Here's another start of ten. Who managed the presidential campaign of John F. Kennedy in 1960? He became Senator of New York in 65, and as a candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination... Smith, Canterbury. Robert Kennedy. Thought you might get that one. That's exactly it. Nice interruption. Ten points, and... And here's your bonus. What word has come to English from the German, meaning to substitute? Pretty easy, I'm sure, for Miss Lodge. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. Five points. What's the literal meaning of the German strafe, or rather strafe, which in English means to uh, a bombardment from the air? The literal meaning of the German Strike. word is... Strafe. Strafe, no, to penalise. Yes, penalise or punish, uh, correctly. That's it, five points. And thirdly, which German general served in World War I as Chief of Staff to Field Marshal Hindenburg? He ran for president in 20, 1925, but won few votes. He was... Ludendorff. Is correct. Another five points, and we're just about at the halfway mark. In fact, we're right there already. Well, a uh, fairly slow-scoring game so far. I think both uh, teams feeling out each other's strengths and weaknesses. Uh, 95 to 50 Canterbury with a, uh, a lead which is certainly not uh, insurmountable or insuperable at this point of the game. Looking back historically, apart from this year, Canterbury last yet uh, last met Waikato back in 1985 when Canterbury won. However, Waikato, of course, are contesting their second final in a row, so uh, I'm sure they're extremely hungry to win. Let's have another start of a ten. This is on the symbol of University Challenge, in fact. What is the origin of the name of the traditional academic hat known as the mortarboard? Brown, Waikato. Uh, it's masonry. We, it's where they um, hold the, the thing they use to put the plaster or cement or whatever uh, they use. Or whatever it is, right. That's exactly it. It's a bricklayer <laughs> square board for his, for, his, uh, for his cement or plaster or whatever it might be. Ten points, well done. And here's your bonus. If alphabetical order were the criteria, what is the first muscle in the human body? First muscle. First what muscle. What do you think of? Muscle, um, muscle, hey. Something in the heart, the atrium? No, it's not really right. Don't want to hurry you. It's the... Atrium? No, the Achilles heel. In fact, the Achilles tendon. Uh, no points. Bypass the letters B and C, and what muscle comes next? D. 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 Deltoids. That's the... What is it? What is it? Deltoids. Deltoids. Is correct. Five points. And thirdly, backwards from Z, and we come to the first to two Ts. I want the two muscles beginning with Ts in the human body. 
Hey. Hey. No, 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 no idea at all? No, no, no. no. No idea. Trapezius and triceps. It's now 65, 295 and another start of 10 points. What is the general term for the firm substance, which is the end result of a process that occurs when an enzyme has converted plasma protein into threads of insoluble proteins in the human body, called fibria? The threads then enmesh the blood cells. Smith, Canterbury. It's a blood clot. That's exactly what it is, Mr. Smith. Well done, 10 points. And here's your bonus. How was the Greek goddess Helen born? Oh, uh, the Leda, the daughter of Leda, the Leda swan, the swan. and the swan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Zeus was the so swan. She was, so she was born in what sort uh, of form? In, in an egg. In an egg, that's exactly why five points. Secondly, which island was adrift in the Aegean Sea until moored by Zeus as the birthplace for Apollo and Artemis? Crete. Crete. Yeah. The yeah. island is? Crete. 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 No, it's Delos, no points. Yeah. Which swift-footed Greek heroine was left to die at birth? She was suckled by a she-bear and grew up as a huntress. Her name was? Uh, Artemis. 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 Okay. Artemis. No, it was Atalanta. No points for that. It's 110 to 65. Canterbury leads. Another start for 10 points. Which two New Zealanders co-wrote a book about their journey of 5,000 kilometres from Sikkim to Pakistan? The title of the book is First Across the Roof of the World and the subtitle The First Ever Traverse to the Himalayas. The journey took place in 1981. Plant, Waikato. Peter Hillary and Dalton. Sorry, got to have both. Uh, that's wrong. Canterbury, can you take it? No. Confirmed. Wilson, Canterbury. Peter Hillary and Graham Dingle. That's exactly right. Yes, 10 points, Canterbury. And here's your bonus. Which two New Zealanders won the men's and women's World Short Course Triathlon Championships Aaron in Perth Baker in 87? Yeah. Aaron Baker and, Aaron Baker and Rick Wills. Wills. That's it, five points. What World Championship was won in Scotland in early 1987 by a New Zealand team with a 49-37 score in the final? It was... Uh, the, oh, it was the World Netball Champs. Oh, oh yes, champs. of course, the, the Netball Champs. It was Netball, yeah. five points. And thirdly, with which Olympian did John McDonald, Brent Claude and Steve Rowlands combine in 1987 to finish sixth in the K4 100-metre class at the World Championship? in West Germany. Oh, Grant Bramwell. Bramwell. Uh, was it? Uh, yes, it? Bramwell? Yeah, go for it. Bramwell. Yeah. Grant Bramwell's exactly right. Another five points and let's get ahead to a starter. What is the surname of the naval recruit in an opera by Benjamin Britten? He becomes the innocent victim of the evil doings... Loshkin, Canterbury. Peter Grant. I'm sorry, you lose five points. Continue for Waikato. The innocent victim of the evil doings of Captain Vare, Corporal Squeak and Master at Arms Claggart. His first name is Billy. The opera is based on the unfinished story by writer Herman Melville in 1891. Brown, Waikato. Billy Budd. That's it, exactly. It's Brown, well done. Billy Budd, ten points and here's the bonus. Where in eastern France did Burgundian monk St. Berno found a now famous abbey in 910? The town consequently became one of the chief religious and cultural centres of Europe. The town of, you'll know it, you won't. Can't remember. Can't remember, it is Cluny. Secondly, what capital city is famed as the site of the 14th or 15th century palace of the Dukes of Burgundy? A completely different claim to fame as the black currant liqueur and mustard of the area. The area is called... Paris, Brussels, no, it's uh, Bern. Must hurry. No. It's um, Paris. It is Dijon, as in Dijon mustard. And thirdly, which European city holds the Baptistry of Saint Giovanni, which has three famous gold doors? Another building is the Cathedral of uh, Santa Maria del Fiore, with the dome by Brunelleschi. Uh, what is the European city? Any idea? Is it, it is, is it somewhere? Is it Florence or? Could be Florence. Oh, Rome, it's Florence. It is Florence. Exactly. That's it. Five points. Another starter for ten. What name is shared by a very large genus of New Zealand flowering plants and the Greek goddess of youth and spring? Any member? Either team? No conferring. She was also... Smith, Canterbury. Uh, Persephone? Sorry, Waikato, can you take it? Any idea? Give me a goddess, any goddess. Smythe, Waikato. Eros? No, Hebe is the flowering plant and the goddess we're talking about, of course. And let's have a picture starter. I want you to tell me what we have in this picture. Here it is. Smythe, Waikato. That is the snout of a pig. Sorry, Canterbury, can you take it? No conferring. Smith, Canterbury. So the snout of a nardvark or an anteater. How about that? Do you wish to choose one or the other? They're both the same, aren't they? Up to a point, I suppose. In actual fact, it's the uh, nose of a cow. Oh, Did oh, you see it in here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just have to keep uh, the next part of our picture bonus until we can answer another starter. And here's the next one. What was the outcome of the conference presided over by James I of England at Hampton Court in 16... Brown, Waikato. The authorised version of the Bible. Nicely interrupted. Oh. That's it, exactly. <laughs> Ten points. And now we'll have three more animal noses. Here's this one. That's the pig. That's the pig. That's uh, five points. Uh, we gave you the last one easy because this one is a great deal more difficult. This animal comes and is named from which region of North Africa? Here it is. Ooh. 
Region of North Africa. Region of North Africa. North Africa. Region of North Africa. Morocco, oh. Tunisia, Algeria. Any idea at all? It's Sahar a... Sahara or something? No, it's a Barbary sheep. Oh, and what about this animal? Is it llama? It's a camel. Camel? Camel, yeah, it's a camel. Camel, you reckon? Okay, camel. camel. Llama, I'm afraid. Oh. No points for that. Let's have another start of ten and get the match moving again. What is the name of the route first navigated by Niels Nord, uh, Nordenskjold along the Arctic coasts of Europe and Asia between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans? The name of the route? Smythe, Waikato. The North West Passage? Sorry, Canterbury, can you take it? No conferring. Loshkin, Canterbury. Northeast Passage. That's it, Mr. Loshkin, the Northeast Passage. Mr. Smythe in some despair at that, but uh, here's the start of it. Here's your bonus, rather. 15 points. What is the literal meaning in terms of colour of the word livid? In terms of colour, what is it? Blue, blue, white. Blue. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, okay. blue. Blue, 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 white. No, it's blue, black, because it comes from the very to be black and blue, and I can't give you that. Uh, secondly, the cinnamon bear and the blue bear, or blue grey glacier bear, represent colour phases of which general American grizzly. bear? Grizzly. Oh. The grizzly has colour phases. Yeah. It's, not, it's not the polar. I think, I'm, I think yeah, grizzly. Think the grizzly. No, no. Oh. Give me the brown. Black I have bear. actually, black bear. actually, I can't accept that. You did the, give me grizzly, yeah. and that was the first answer. It was, in fact, the black bear, but Mr. Smith got a little too late. No points for that. Second, uh, thirdly, what is the name of the province of the Republic of Sudan, which is comprised mostly of black clay, much of it between the Blue and White Niles? Nubia. The name of the Nubia. province Nubia. is Nubia. the... Nubia. Nubia. No, it's actually the Blue Nile province, not nearly so romantic. No points for that. Let's have another start of a ten. Give me the name of the TV character who began uh, a series as a small boy perched up a tree. He later transfigured into adult form as a writer, almost straight jacket. Wood, Canterbury. Philip Mallow. Here's correct. Nice interruption. Well. Fairly easy. <laughs> ten points and the chance at a further 15 in this bonus. Which group of plants is used to stabilise ice cream? It's seaweed. Seaweed. Yes, it is kelp, seaweed. That's it, or algae, <laughs> seaweed mostly. That's it, five points. Secondly, which American playwright in 1963 dramatised Carson McCullough's novel The Ballad of the Sad Café? The American playwright is... Um, Tennessee Williams. Yeah, Arthur Miller. Any ideas? Arthur Miller. No, Edward Albee. And thirdly, from which language did we get the word sorbet? French. From the French. No, from Arabic, in fact. Uh, it dates oh, right back to, to Arabic. So I can't give you a point for that. Yeah. And here's another start of a ten. What item travelled with the artefacts is the life force of the Te Maori exhibition. Its original home was the South Island River. Any member of the team, no conferring. Water, Waikato. Uenuku? No, afraid not. Canterbury? Any idea? Smith, Canterbury. A greenstone boulder. That's exactly right. Ten points. That's it, Canterbury. Well done. And a bonus song, Names and Nicknames of Music. What's the name of Schumann's Symphony No. 3 in E-flat, which was composed after a trip along the Rhine? It was the... Blue Danube? No. No, 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 no not okay. the Blue Danube. Schumann, No. 3. Don't want to hurry you, it's the... The Rhine Symphony. The Rhine Symphony. No, correctly, the Rhenish Symphony, oh, so right. I can't give you that. What is the nickname of Beethoven's Piano Forte Sonata in C-sharp minor, because the first movement is likened to a boat floating at night on Lake Lucerne? The, the Moonlight Sonata. That is correct. Five points. And thirdly, what is Haydn's String Quartet in C call, because the slow movement consists of variations on the former National Anthem of Austria? Um, well, what's the National Anthem of Austria? Alex? Alex? Uh, well, God defend our emperor, the emperor, uh, the, I suppose. Yes, yeah, the emperor quartet. Emperor quartet, exactly right. Well done. <laughs> Process of deduction. Well done indeed. Uh, another start of 10 points, any member of the team. What name do we give to the breed of dog thought to have been derived from the Tachichi, a small mute dog kept by the Toltec people of Mexico? Wilson, Canterbury. Chihuahua. Chihuahua, nicely yes. interrupted there, Mr. Wilson. That's it. And everything going Canterbury's way now. Here's a bonus. Which king appointed Thomas a Becket as his chancellor and in 1162 had him ordained as priest? Henry II. Yeah, Henry it was II. Henry II, five points. Secondly, which saint was a brother of St. Gregory of Nyssa, one of the founders of monasticism? Which saint? Uh, it was St. Benedict. Okay, St. Yeah, Benedict. St. Benedict. St. Benedict is it wrong. It is St. Basil the Great. Uh, no points for that. And thirdly, by what better known name do you know Agnes Gokka Benjanka? Benjanka, I should say. Um, um, I'll spell it if you like. It's, it's rather hard to pronounce. G O X H A. Bedjanka, B E D J A N X H I A. Not that's Stalin's daughter, is it? No. Who's that? No. Okay. no. Is it Mother Teresa? Try Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, okay. Yeah, okay, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, that's it. Well, <laughs> well done. You get another five points for that. And here's a jackpot starter. And at this point, obviously, my cat would like to get it worth double the usual number of points. What is the Italian word 
for shore. The word originally applied to a narrow coastal strip around the Gulf of Genoa, but has since extended to other coastal areas. Loshkin, Canterbury. Laguna. Sorry, you lose five points, Mr. Loshkin. I'm afraid I'll continue for Waikato. Including the group of French resorts, which are also known as the Côte d'Azur. Brown, Waikato. Riviera. That's it, ten points. You've got the jackpot starter. Now it's time to try for the jackpot bonus worth a total of uh, 30 points if you get all parts of it correctly. A lot of viewers are actually going to know this uh, sport. The answer to this one is the sporting question. The question is, though, do you? Six New Zealand cricketers have taken 100 or more test wickets. This is an all or nothing 30 to name four of them. Can be Hadley, Richard, Richard Hadley. Collinge. Yeah, Collinge. Hadley Collinge. Bracewell, has he done it yet? Um, he may Chatfield. have. Chatfield. Chatfield. Keynes has. Cairns. Cairns, you've got three, you need one and more. And Chatfield, I think. Yeah. That's it, you've hit the jackpot. That's it, three points, well done. Obviously a popular win. Two minutes left on the clock and uh, Waikato up to 135, another start of a ten. In Europe, why are female pigs especially used to hunt for truffles? Plant Waikato. Because they can smell them. They can yes, smell but them and dig for them. Certainly, but why in particular female pigs? Because... I don't think you've got it. I'm sorry, uh, Waikato. I throw it to Canterbury. No, Smith, no. Canterbury. The more easily held back. Uh, no, that's not restrained. it at all. I wouldn't think so in the condition they're in because the smell of a truffle is identical to the uh, attractant odour released by male pigs. In other words, <laughs> sex. So I, I don't think you can hold the female back. Here's another start of ten. Which American university opened in 1825 with Thomas Jefferson as rector in the state which was to remain the former president's lifelong... Loshkin, Canterbury. The Virginia State Yes, university. correct. Nice at Russians, Loshkin. Uh, ten points, and here's your bonus. What flap of cartilage in the mouth is upright when at rest? Upright. It's the... Uvula. One and a half minutes to go, no, the epiglottis. Which primitive fish has a brain case but no jaw and a rasp-like tongue which bores holes into dead or disabled lamprey. fishes? Lamprey. Yeah, the, the lamprey. 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 The answer I have is the hagfish, but I believe the lamprey does the same thing. I'll let you have the five points. Thirdly, several species of bumblebee have been introduced into New Zealand, especially to help pollinate red clover. Which native bees were unable to do? Why was this? Why couldn't they do anything with clover? Um, because only bumblebees are the right shape to get it, red clover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, bumblebees are the right shape. Uh, yeah. The native bees yeah. weren't... Well, sure. the wrong shape. Yeah. Yeah. No, the fact is their tongues were too short. Couldn't get down there. A minute left on the clock. Here's another start of a ten. Some people sleep all alone every night. Instead of taking your lover to bed, the lyrics... Smythe, Waikato. Those are lyrics by Billy Joel from the song An Innocent Man, of the, from the album of the same you've, name. You've touched all the bases there, and you're right. Well done. That's it. Ten points. Yeah. And here's a bonus for you. What is the popular name for a meteor when its atoms have been heated to incandescence? Very easy. This meteorite. Meteorite. It's a... Meteorite. What do you meteorite. call it? Meteorite. What do we call meteorite. it? Meteorite. Meteorite. No, we call it a shooting or falling star. That's common, common name, half a minute ago. What's the name in physics for fluorescence that persists after the radiation producing it has stopped? What we call oh, that? Um, it's... Lumino luminosity? Something like that, yeah. Luminosity? No, it's, phos uh, it's uh, phosphorescence, in fact. Thirdly, what are the luminous layer of opaque gases called that form the visible surface of the sun? We call it the... Photosphere. Photosphere. Yeah, the photosphere, that's exactly it. Five points from the bonus and only a few seconds left. Here's a starter. Which former theology student of Cambridge University died in May this year? An obituary described him as one of the most brilliant and eccentric public figures. We'll never know, I suppose, that it was, in fact, the 100th Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael Ramsey. The match is over at the 1988 final of the BNZ University Channels and uh, Challenge, and the victory goes to Canterbury. Our warmest congratulations, Canterbury. Well, it's been a very exciting series, and I don't think any of us grudge Canterbury their win. And Waikato obviously delighted at having made the finals for two years in a row. Perhaps next year they'll make it a third time, and uh, perhaps they'll win. We'll look forward to seeing you again next year. And uh, until then, from both teams tonight, first from Canterbury. Good night. Good night. Good night. And Good night. From, <laughs> from their opponents, Waikato. Good night. Bye-bye. Thanks. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> and just before we go, I'd like to thank the Bank of New Zealand, Apple Computer, CE, uh, CED Distributors Limited, and Hewlett Packard New Zealand for the support they've given us uh, on this program. And I want to ask now Jack Phillips of the BNZ to present the trophy to the winning team. And until next year, from me, a very good good night. Good night.